Hi everyone, uh, it's Richard. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to start the, the Norway scenario. Um, I have some general thoughts I wanted to share, uh, and then we'll get into the map. But before I do that, I want to talk about a purchase I'm going to make. I am pulling up uh, the, uh, the, the old stats <coughs> on a... Uh, the original game, because I want to compare some infantry stats with what's in the old game, because I'm going to buy one of these. Um, one second. I, I think, I don't normally buy paratroopers, but <laughs> I'm thinking there might be some interesting things I can do with them. Um, I'm waiting for this to load. There we go. So, I know people traditionally <laughs> use them to seize objectives that they know are empty in the back. Sometimes they use them to disrupt uh, the enemy and their coordination in the back. Um, I don't like using them because they take a lot of damage. So... Just real quick, if I look at the Y mark, uh, ground defense is 8, the Fostermakers have 6. <coughs> That's actually a huge difference. If you look at Grenadiers, it's 8. Mountain Troops is 8. <coughs> Pioneers are 8. Everybody's... Only, uh, the, the, the cavalry has, uh, <clears throat> has as low. But, um, where's the attack? Its soft attack is 6, which is actually higher than the Grenadier, and our infantry is 4. That's all really good. That That's reflective of the fact that German infantry was really good. Um, well, let me just check real quick on the stat differences. So in the original game, uh, uh, paratroopers cost 140. They cost 355 now. So, you might be curious, why are they so much more expensive? Almost absurd how expensive they are. I'm going to take a look. Uh, he gave it one... <coughs> he gave it one more ammo. <coughs> I think he did that for balance purposes to make them more useful. Um, they do have movement of three. Uh, he also s raised the ground defense, so they were quite vulnerable in the original game. So he he raised the ground defense, <clears throat> and that's the difference. Uh, they are uh, bunker killers. So <clears throat> so the only difference is that paratroopers are much more expensive. They have one more <clears throat> uh, soft attack and one more ground defense. So, some of you are wondering, why would you increase the price so much? Well, the reality is, paratroopers were elite troops. They were expensive to train. And their flexibility is such that the doctor felt you really should pay to have these guys in your core. Um, <coughs> their ability to disrupt what's going on behind the scenes is really powerful. And you shouldn't just get something like that for free. I mean, it's only 140 in the original game. And he's saying, these guys are so good that, you know, you should be willing to pay more. Um, the other reason I want to get them is... Pioneers are really expensive. And they only have a movement of two. Like, if I compare... Uh, yeah, let's do it this way. <coughs> if I compare them... The difference is Pioneers <coughs> have air defense and much higher uh, heart attack. And they have higher close defense and they have higher uh, ground defense. But, but paratroopers have one extra movement. <clears throat> and I can't really afford to do Pioneers right now. Uh, so I'm going to buy these guys because they're bunker killers as well. Pioneers have the benefit of ignoring entrenchment. <coughs> now, I think that's important. I will definitely be getting Pioneers later. But the tricky thing with Pioneers is that the movement of two is extremely restrictive. Um, 
there are some hero units I'll get later with extra movement. They're like automatically made into pioneers. If I don't get a hero <coughs> on my infantry that's a movement plus one, then I don't upgrade them to pioneers. <coughs> so, <clears throat> I will use these guys, which is risky. So these guys have lower ground defense compared to other German infantry. They will take more damage, but less damage than the original game. So they could be quite powerful. So I'm going to buy one of those. Um, and just, these got introduced. I want to look at these stats. Um, 167. Um, that's the same. He actually did not increase the price. <clears throat> I'm just checking. He raised the Grenadier's heart attack by one. <clears throat> and... Just checking. That's it. He just raised the heart attack. He didn't change anything else. So he thinks they're well balanced. Um, one of the problems with Grenadiers is that they only have movement of two. <clears throat> so if I were to upgrade my Weimar infantry to a Grenadier, I'm going to run into this issue that I have to buy a truck. Because two movement is not going to cut it. Um, and they do have better stats. For sure. Yeah, they definitely have better stats. So, it's going to be interesting. At some point, I will probably get some Grenadiers. But, if I do, I'm going to need to get trucks. <clears throat> so, that's interesting. I think, like, I could upgrade... One of these guys has attack plus one. Yeah. I think that that's in class, right? Yeah, it's only 60 to upgrade. Um... They are hard hitting. Like, let's see, the heart attack here is one, and then it goes up to two. Right? <coughs> and they have some air attack. But, uh. <coughs> but, the thing is, at some point I'm gonna have to use elite replacements. And it gets more and more expensive. To elite replace on more expensive units. <coughs> so, I have to be careful about that. I'm going to delay getting Grenadiers, basically. Um, if I get a movement plus one hero on this guy, he's just going to become a pioneer. Um, if I were to look at the stats on that, uh, <coughs> you should notice that the ammo count's lower. <coughs> yeah, the ammo count goes from five to four. Five to four. The cost to buy pioneers in the base game was 193, so these are much more expensive. He lowered the soft attack to four, the hard attack to three. I think that was to balance it with grenadiers, <coughs> who <coughs> who have a higher soft attack. What's interesting is that their hard attack is lower. <coughs> Yeah, in the base game, the Heart Attack of Grenadiers was three. Pioneers was three. So he raised that on the Heart Attack. So apparently they were a heavy-hitting infantry. It kind of suggests that any movement plus one hero should be made Pioneers. They're just really, really good. That's why they're so expensive. I'm seeing if there's any other changes. There isn't. Oh, there is! Close Defense of Pioneers is four. In the base game, it was two. So... <clears throat> this makes me think that compared to Grenadiers, um, which is just two, that these guys are almost always better. <clears throat> In fact, what is better about Grenadiers? Better soft attack, more ammo, more initiative. Okay. <coughs> initiative is important. <clears throat> so, that's something to think about. <coughs> I do plan on buying these at some point, but not right now. I got the Fallout Makers. I figure this is the first time you can get them. I'm going to try some new things with him. I don't think I'm going to use them the way a lot of people use them. Because uh, I'm going to pretend I don't know what's occupied or what's not occupied. Um, I think they're great for situations where you don't have a lot of land-based placement. And you want to put something in the air that helps alleviate the stress there. Where are my farms? There they are. Uh, these guys are pretty deadly, though. Um, 
Apparently, I need to put you. I have to figure out where to put them. Um, anyway, so that's that's one thing I wanted to cover: infantry. I think the infantry are more expensive. The stats have been moved around. Sometimes they've been made better or worse, depending on uh, what what particular substat deductor wanted to target. But I think you can see that pioneers are quite valuable, and they have a lot of advantages over grenadiers. But because he upped the initiative on the grenadiers to three, and he upped the soft attack, that might make you <clears throat> not fully commit to pioneers. I wouldn't fully commit to pioneers anyway. They're expensive. They're really used for bunker busting and city assaults and fortification assaults. I don't want an army of pioneers. I want a, I want like maybe three, maybe four pioneers over the campaign. And I want to apply them to critical points. You know, if I know I have to go through this fortification to get to a critical area, you want these guys to show up and be able to deliver the blow. <clears throat> when you're talking about general combat, I think these guys are going to be very helpful at taking out infantry. Uh, if I look at it compared to the Weimark, um, <clears throat> so Grenadiers have plus one soft attack, plus one air attack, plus one um, <coughs> uh, heart attack, plus one initiative, plus one air defense, which is nice. But the Weimark has more movement and more ammo. <clears throat> these are all things to think about. <clears throat> Next, I wanted to talk about this map. Um, there's some interesting things you can conclude. Can I see anything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this guy, let me look at his stats. Um, he can see two. I happen to know this is empty, and this guy can see one. This is empty, right? <clears throat> I see fortifications. I was warned in the message. Uh... <coughs> <clears throat> we have ships. We're under heavy fire from shore batteries. Um, there's going to be forts. All You can see these fortification hexes. There's forts in here. Um, due to vision that I already have from both ships, I happen to know this is an empty hex. It's interesting to me that I've never noticed this before, <coughs> despite how many times I've played this map. But it's immediately apparent there's an empty hex there. If you look at your... <coughs> if you look at... Um, <coughs> if, you, if you look at uh, what you're given, you're given... Uh, three fossil makers? Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Or no, no. I'm given I'm giving a fighter bomber and two of these guys. <coughs> you can use these guys... These paratroopers could park themselves here and start assaulting these fortifications. They're they're uh, uh, auxiliary units, so you don't care if they get destroyed. If they accelerate taking out, say, these two back fortifications, this entire line is weakened, and that's important. Um, <clears throat> that's something the doctor came up with, and I'm embarrassed that I never noticed it myself. But there's no reason a blind player wouldn't notice that. You're given paratroopers, this spot is empty. The worst that happens is you fly this plane to this spot, and then they move troops in there. Uh, and then you just fly this plane somewhere else, basically. But if they don't actually put troops in there, you're going to drop your paratroopers here on turn two, and <clears throat> it's going to be total chaos back here. <clears throat> and because that's, a, that's an open space, so they can definitely do damage, but it also saves your ship from taking damage. Just something to think about. We're supposed to preserve this for a decisive victory. Um, not particularly challenging. <coughs> okay, the second thing is... Uh, let's look at the map overall. <coughs> um, it, it's a little weird. We're deploying a, a small landing force here. And we have a bunch of naval places to put, um, to put our troops. I also have vision on this spot this has vision of two i happen to know there's nothing uh actually i know there's nothing here this is just a place that's not been occupied by the norwegians i can use that fact to launch a landing party and it's not cheesy at all um then 
so I'm looking at, this is Oslo, I, I, I look at the map and I go, it would be nice to attack this way and attack this way. And it's less about critical space in this map and more about critical points. So all of these fortification hexes need to be assaulted. Um, it's not going to be safe for me to move up this road and attack Oslo that way. Um, and this is a critical point. If I break this point, the way to Oslo opens up. <laughs> and I also see that there are some far away objectives. Uh, you could use your, far sh your, your paratroopers to get up there if you wanted, but I don't think it's worth it. I think that you can, I want to pile up and push up this direction as much as possible. Um, I'm expecting heavy resistance here. And I want to, I want to put as much firepower in this region as possible. See, I also noticed the map is foresty and mountainy, so I want to deploy both mountain troops. This is out of the way, but if I send my six movement mountain troop up here, I can probably take this out. And then if I take this out, <clears throat> I can begin the process of maybe out, you know, outflanking this position or moving up and grabbing this position. <coughs> When you look at it, it looks like I'm going to put a landing force here, and it's going to take forever to move up the, up the coast to go up to this location. <coughs> so if I could accelerate things by sending a small force up here to take these out and then move over here, that would help. <coughs> uh, do I have inf other information? Go down. Yeah, I see that I have two of these boats and these capital ships. Uh, I can use these for de-entrenching and artillery support. That's really nice to know. Uh, <clears throat> and I have a fighter bomber. Okay. Uh, so just to review, I plan on sending two forces. One over here. I want to somehow clear this up, and I'm expecting heavy resistance. This... This is going to be slow going, which is fine, because this group is going to attack over here, and it's going to be slow going. It's just one road, basically. <clears throat> and it's just super mountainous and super annoying to advance. I'm going to ignore what's going on in the back. Um, maybe. I mean, I have another paratrooper. It's kind of up to me what to do with him. I'll figure that out later. Um, I have my other paratrooper, but I think I'm going to try to drop him somewhat. Maybe over here. I want to put some infantry over here as fast as possible. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to put a, a landing force here and a landing force here. My para One paratrooper goes here to try to assault these locations. You know, if that guy gets destroyed, I could send the other paratrooper to the same spot, which would be hilarious. <clears throat> Maybe that's what I'll do. Is I'll, I'll drop a paratrooper and then maybe send another paratrooper in this region to help assault it. And I can sacrifice them to give me time to move up. And then once the assault on Oslo happens, I think the rest of this is going to fall pretty easily. I might even be able to assault these objectives all at the same time. So that's the plan. The question is, what am I deploying? Here we go. I'm going to bring both fighters just so I can get them back up to two stars. <clears throat> uh, I'll put one here. <clears throat> this guy's almost two stars. Yeah. I'll put a fighter somewhere over here. <clears throat> um, I need to figure out where to put this guy. Uh, strategically, what where would it make sense? Oh, I'm going to put him over here. I want to immediately get some vision on what's going on. So... Uh, why is he like that? There we go. I'm going to stick him here. <clears throat> and the idea is going to be... I'm going to try to park him somewhere around here and bring my fighter up and protect everybody. Uh, I need my great mountain troops. These guys. These guys are going to move with speed up north. I need two artillery down here. I'm going to bring both 10.5s. With me. And I need my other mountain troops on this side. Yeah. 
<coughs> you can see I'm gonna overload this side with mountain troops. I'm expecting some heavy resistance somewhere. One one of the guns is gonna go north and the other is gonna go this way. I don't need that much artillery. I've got two capital ships ready to help. Uh, then I need to bring more artillery over here. Plus infantry. Um, whoever doesn't have a hero gets top priority. Um, I have an SE troop. Yeah, I can bring my SE. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna probably... Do I bring another artillery piece? Maybe. Oh, I'll bring... Um, he's already maxed out. Damn. Uh, I don't think I need him. How many kills does he have? 147. I, I don't need my tactical bomber. Um, there's not really supposed to be tanks in Norway. I know that we see um, some tanks next scenario, but it really wasn't a tank heavy battle. So that means the use of my tactical bomber is very limited. I could bring more artillery. There's no way bringing more artillery is bad. <laughs> um... These guys are below two stars, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an invasion force here and then bring an artillery piece here and maybe start assaulting this location. Oh, I should bring my anti-tank. This is, this is a good scenario for him because there's fortification hexes, or you suspect, you suspect there's fortifications, right? And under the right circumstances, the anti-tank can actually do a reasonable amount of damage. And this is one of the safest scenarios to deploy your troops, so I'm definitely going to do that. And try to get them up to two stars if possible. Uh, I don't feel the need to bring anti-aircraft. I'm not expecting stiff air resistance. Um, I don't think in the actual campaign in Norway it was, it was like a lot of heavy fighting in the air. Um... I have extra troops, so I plan on putting one troop here. Okay, I'll put you here. I have three slots. Um, <laughs> I brought two fighters. Maybe I'll bring, just in case there is more of an air presence than I thought, I'll bring my fighter bomber. <laughs> uh, my scout might get some use as well. <clears throat> I'll deploy him here. I'll bring up, in case there's something heavy hitting, I'll bring my scout up. I don't need my tank. Uh, more artillery. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, let's bring more artillery. I mean, <laughs> this seems like a map where suppression is helpful, so let's let's do it. Okay, I'm ready. Let's hope for clear weather. Yes, this is great. I get maximum vision. Um, I can scoot this guy up, for instance, just to spy out what's here. And it's 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 serious, right? Uh, I'm gonna attack this. <clears throat> so I need, if I'm gonna successfully assault Oslo from this side, I need to break this. Um, I've got some. How far up can my fighter get? Really far. Okay. So this guy is going to go... Okay, how far can my paratroopers get before I get too excited? Hang on. I... Oh, no! Ah! Stop being slow, computer. Okay, let me see if I can get these guys... There, I can. You're gonna go here, right at the edge of the range, and then and then I'm gonna provide fighter protection. I'm really curious to see what happens when I do that, where, where the plane will go. And then, uh, I have a backup plane that I don't care about, and I can just send it to assault up north. I want to break these 
fortifications as much as possible. So I will attack. Excellent! I'm getting some damage in. So then I'll attack again. <clears throat> I'm hoping these capital ships serve as bait. He backs off. I'm doing that to get him out of range so only these two can hit him. We know this is empty, but where are my paratroopers? And where is my fighter? <clears throat> Come here. I'm going to send you like uh, here. I want to spy out the region. And I'm going to do some more spying this way. So they can see my fighter and that's it. Um, this guy sees one. Okay. These guys are ready to land. Um, I see two, right? I don't know what's here. That's true. One, two, three. Uh, oh, I have this guy. How far can he go? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spy this location out and see what's here. Okay. So I find that there's infantry here. Uh, can we get the info on that? I'm curious what's here, basically. Three. One, two, three. Yeah. So, I have to be careful. Um, I can park him here. If there's infantry here, they can see everything. So... There's infantry there. Hang on one second. I should probably spy out what's over here first. And I will do that with this guy. You're going to find... I play this scenario a little bit different than Bracada and other people. I'm very hyper-focused on concentration. Um, I think that Bracada's playthrough is a little bit of a mess because... He wasn't quite as focused as he should have been... Um, if you just put all of your firepower in key locations and you efficiently organize it, like a lot of these coastal towns fall apart quickly. And you're going to see that here. That's a really lucky shot. That's actually a really lucky shot. Okay, so the next order of business... Um, Well, where should I put you? I should put you... Here. I'll put you... Here. Okay. So, this artillery is a problem. Um, I need to move my infantry. Here. This is fine. This artillery only has two range, so I'll just move up like this and attack. Begin the process of de-entrenching him. That was not very helpful. <laughs> I'm going to move him up and then... Like this, okay. And then you are gonna deploy. This is great, my scout car is gonna come up and help maybe take out this guy. 
So the question is, do I attack the artillery, or do I attack the infantry? The artillery can't actually hit me. Um, but I might want to attack the artillery next turn. So I'm going to attack this. I think damaging this so that my scout can go up and take care of it would be a good idea. It also means the enemy is just going to pour prestige and a dead unit. Okay. Uh, I gotta move my paratroopers. I don't... Do I need... I don't need infantry over here. I, I think I would rather offer these guys as bait. Um, like... I could even offer... I could even put these here. And the, and the AI might attack this, actually. Um, meanwhile... Uh, is this... Yeah. Meanwhile, I think I'm out of vision range here. So, I'm going to do this. These guys have scout vision of two. I know this is empty. Um, this is somewhat risky, but if, if there's infantry, it looks like there's infantry in all these hexes. They don't see my ships, so it's not as bad as it seems. I can't put my troops here though, because that, that's all viewable. So I'll just, uh, we'll move everybody up. We're, we're going to do this in this really safe way. Um, it's a good idea to go a little slow on this invasion anyway, because you need time to get your capital ships up north. We'll move everybody up. Oh, I could park a ship here. I forgot about that. Oh, no I can't, because my fighter's in the wrong place. My bad. <laughs> and I'm just gonna wait, and then um, once I drop my paratroopers, I can block access to that port. And then we can proceed. Uh, what's next? I am not attacking that. And that's it. Cloudy weather next turn, not great. Okay. So he went for the easy target that was undefended. good. That ship isn't that helpful on this map anyway. Okay. Okay. So my paratroopers are going to land, and I think that these three artillery shells are going to be distracted by that. Uh, yep. Next. My fighter... Oh no. Huh. Was I out of fuel? Why did that... It must have, like, punished me for parking my planes there. Anyway. Do I attack this? Maybe. I'm gonna attack this. I don't really care if my fighter bomber gets damaged. Because, uh, you know, it it's going to get a lot of experience, basically. And I don't care if this fighter bomber gets damaged, because it's, um, it's just an auxiliary unit. 
I literally can't move him at all. Interesting. All right, <clears throat> this guy. I'm gonna land him immediately. And the point is, I blocked the road, it's now safe. And he's gonna land immediately. No, no, I want you to land. Why is this hard? Come on, come on. No. <sighs> there we go. That's fine. I'm so out of vision range. They'll be fine. Uh, bu -bu -bu. You can go here. This guy can't move into the mountainous region, so... Where's my defense hero? Right here. Perfect. Now that this is safe and I've badly damaged that plane, I can push everybody up and we'll disembark. Reinforce that, that's fine. Huh. Three entrenchment. I might use my elite mountain troops here to take this guy out. Or maybe not. That's, uh, that's a really good hit. Come on. Like, this better artillery is a big deal. I'm suppressing a lot more. So then the question is, what do I do with my scout? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oof. How bit how he's dug in at four. First thing I'm gonna do no, no, I'm gonna suppress the artillery. And then I'm gonna send my scout up to hit it again. I might be able to kill the artillery <laughs> in a very creative way. Um is he fully suppressed? Yeah, okay. I have enough movement to attack this artillery. Like so. Then, I plan on hitting it again with this guy. So, uh, that, losing that artillery just weakens this entire position. Uh, where can I move you? Ah. Then I'm gonna push him back, which denies vision. And you can see, since he has vision of four, there's literally nothing around here. So, my 10.5 is gonna go north. And this guy can go north. And I am probably just going to wait for artillery support and just hide and I'm also going to ambush them. If somebody tries to come out of the north and hit me, they're going to get stopped by my mountain troops. Okay. Next. This is something I do a little bit different. I tend to hyper concentrate on one spot. So I'm going to use these guys to de-entrench each infantry. And I find that it's actually pretty efficient. Uh... So he's only going up one entrenchment every turn, and these guys are just going to sit here by themselves, reduce the net entrenchment of that guy by one. So next turn, I'm probably going to be able... 
next turn, I'm probably going to be able to take this guy out. I have infantry here coming, too. You... I'm totally out of vision range, so there's no reason for him to come here. Um, I can't move up. This guy is waiting. And you're just going to go here. I have to protect my stuff. Like... Yeah. He's going to go here. And now um, all of my guys are protected. He, unfortunately, has to move. And I'm going to put him here. And he's going to... And one more de-entrenchment. This is great. It's going to be really easy to, to kick him out now. Um... Who's next? He can stay. Uh, hit this guy. So I want to take out this fort next turn. Which weakens this position considerably. I can't move him up because I'll get hit by a fighter, so... Okay. Uh, you can already move up. I don't need these down here anymore. They can help me... Uh, if there's more of an air force, they'll feel the need to attack here. Okay. Who else? Nope. That's it for this turn. Yep. It's interesting that AI thinks the ship is more valuable. That's okay. So I'm going to take that 3 strength fort out next turn. All right, clear weather is great. Uh, can he already take him out? Yeah, let's take him out. Really? Next, we're going to attack. Uh, I have a plane I don't care about. I'm going to send it up north to attack his fighter. Maybe? Or do I set another fighter trap? Uh, let's do this. And attack. Maybe I'll get lucky and kill it. Perfect. So I don't have to worry about really much of anything from the air now. This is just... He's going to get badly damaged, but it doesn't matter to me. You have one job. You have a suppressed... Okay, so one of the three major annoying uh, forts is that taken out, and then I'll focus on this one. It weakens the position up here considerably. Uh, let's see. Ah, stop it. I need to start establishing a presence. Uh, I'm going to just park you here. And this blocks him from doing anything. You're going to go here. And you're going to go here. And what this does is I've blocked all ability to attack my units. And now we're going to disembark.
Uh, it doesn't matter that I didn't conquer that hex because um, there's no air force that can attack me and I've blocked all movement towards it. So, next, I plan on taking this objective. And he's entrenched at three. Hang on. Ah, come on. Then I'll attack with my fighter. Uh, then I will move my fighter. Here. Please. Then... Uh, well, I think my mountain troops can handle this, so... They have a defense plus one hero, too. Okay. Can my scout do it? Let's see. I think my scout can handle this. He's actually basically two stars, so... And it was able to handle it. Great. Uh, need to move you up. That's blo I was suspecting that was blocked, which is why I didn't go in there. Uh, where can you hit? I'm gonna hit this fort. My objective is to take this one out next. Okay, next, these guys need to move up. And I'm gonna de-entrench him. He's at five. I have artillery here, so I'm gonna move him up. You can see I'm carefully orchestrating everything so it's as safe as possible. Um, if that infantry wants to attack my defense plus two infantry, backed by artillery, feel free. And you can see I'm just going to constantly pile up on the next target and damage uh, its entrenchment. Going here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit this guy again. And the entrenchment is rapidly falling. If it was fully suppressed, I would definitely attack, but, you know, there's still a rugged defense chance, so not worth it. Um, and now I'm going to get the rest of my guys in position. I can also protect my artillery by doing this, and it tells me there's nothing there. I would love if the infantry came out and attacked my artillery. Th these positions are going to fall. I've got so much artillery that... Uh, next, I'm assuming there's something here, <laughs> right? Oh, I can move you up. I just want to bring artillery to reduce the chance that my elite mountain troops get damaged. Exactly, I did two suppression, and it made it really unlikely that I would get damaged. Uh, so where are my planes? 
Ah. This guy cannot stay here. He's gonna go here. My fighters are not that useful. Uh, they were there to protect me, essentially. I don't see the point in attacking here. Let him attack me on an open hex. I think that's good for my my guy. I'm going into the uh No. There's no point in doing that. Okay. That's my turn. Let's see what happens. So I think things are looking okay. Oh, he didn't even damage me that much. That's good. However, that protects my capital ship. Um, one more turn, so I don't have to worry about damage there. Uh, I don't mind that I lost that mountain troop. He helped take out one of the fortifications, and that's a big deal. Next, I'm going to focus on this. It also means it doesn't take away experience that I need on my other troops. I am going to attack you again. I want him to be suppressed enough so it's safe for my fighter bomber to attack him. Perfect. Great. I've now I'm weakening that position. Uh oh. Mm -mm. You could just move up. Next turn, if there's something here, I can attack it. If something attacks my mountain troops, they can't see the artillery. Let's do this. Oh, let's attack again. I'm saving these guys for attacking over here. Attack. I'm going to use my uh, capital ship as um, artillery, and then my uh, scout can go up and kill it. <clears throat> and then, can this guy move? No, but this guy can move. And I can set a track. I have double artillery protection on that guy. Alright. And support's coming. Uh, you... do not want to be here right now. Next order of business. I'm going to attack this spot. Uh, You didn't attack, which is interesting. Um, my SE infantry, huh? I've got an idea. Uh, I don't really need to do that. He can go here. Ah, infantry. Got it. Uh, you can go here, and then I can hit you. This guy's without artillery support at the moment. <clears throat> right, and now, now you can see the artillery is coming. I don't even think that's necessary. Um, I'm out of range here. I'm gonna pull him back. 
and you're gonna sit here. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm waiting for my support to get here. Great. Uh, let's take this spot. Okay, okay. I can move him up next turn and attack there. I'm gonna take my fighter and go here. So my fighters are also useful for the entrenchment. I'm going to actually probably use... I'm going to hit this with artillery and then hit it with my fighter. And that might make it easier. I'm going to grab that airfield. Oh, I have this guy. You know what you can do? You can hit this spot. Do you see that I'm constantly hitting the same spots? Um, just to keep... I want to keep the concentration on, on these critical points. I want to just keep hitting them. Um, I think it's the best approach to this map. Mercilessly assault the same points. And what happens is that uh, the, the points fall systematically. Interesting, so that guy moved. I, I actually, uh, I'm going to have to stop here. But this guy moved out. He's afraid of my paratroopers. That's really funny. I'm tempted to move them in there and grab that location. Because then this will target them, probably. So I need to, I want to break these two spots this turn. Oh, I can use this guy to do it. I'll push him out, use him to finish him off, and, and it'll be great. Because he can go here, yeah. But uh, that's all for now. I have to go, and I'll finish this up later. But there's, you know, you see how very calm and, and methodological I am with attacking this map. Richard out.